Welcome to another episode of the Black Outers Podcast. I'm your host, Rod, joined as always by my co-host, Karen. And we're live on a Saturday, ready to do some feedback. Um, you guys left lots of feedback, everybody. We oh, saw you. Shit. Okay. Comments, Y'all voicemails, had to say, emails. Apparently. You know, we appreciate y'all to take the time out to do that. We it's do. All in the show notes on how to do that. So, you know, I think that answers that question um so i guess without further ado let's talk about the people that gave us money okay because some of y'all were nice and you went to our website and you donated to the cause thanks for supporting us may i have your attention you are now listening to charlotte and and karen we welcome the good folks who tied to the black languages that's right you Shout outs and new cash outs. Let's go. Yay. Douglas R. David from Brooklyn. Johanna M. Ricky A. Frederick, what to call him. Laura F. Cavis D. Chris from Hawaii. Tabitha M. Corey Dutikula. April G. Alexis H. Wonga from Down Under. Marlon B. Tanya S. Dostra J. Those are the people that gave us money this week. Thank you for the money. All right. We also got some five star reviews. Let's go. Thank you. We love to see it. We do. We love to read it. We love the five star reviews. We appreciate y'all. Um, let's go to the first one. Too easy to not keep doing. Realize I was wasn't putting in on the reviews. And it was so simple to do. So here it is. Best podcast duo in the game by OJTKC. Uh, five stars. Thank you. Thank you. They ain't got to be long, y'all. Four flame emojis. And this is for this too much. The show I do with Bossy Icky. Oh, come on through. You five stars. Five stars. And it just say, they five by B. Williker. Thank you, B. Williker. That's it. We'll take emojis. We don't care. Uh, We got Listen to This Show by Dark Chocolate Big Daddy Pimp. Ah, uh-huh, that name. <laughs> big chocolate, big daddy pimp. Dark, yeah, dark chocolate, big daddy <laughs> pimp. Get it right. My bad. Uh, you want you will not be disappointed. This show will have you laughing, thinking, and having you work on yourself. Rod and Karen are a dynamic power couple that gives so much substance and perspective to the many current issues, and some I'm sure aren't on your radar. You'll love playing their games with them or listening to their banter, plus the wonderful guests they have on. Be so good. Friday Karen are the best. I've been listening for over five years. And finally, my work got an iPhone. Android users till I die. So I'm finally able to leave y'all a five-star review y'all deserve. Ain't shame. Ain't, can't shame me no more. Love y'all, Neil from Seattle. Thank you, Neil. Thank you. Uh uh Crook. We we don't we don't care if a crook come to your company. Uh we've had people leave us a five-star review off of stolen phones. Like we don't care. We'll take the reviews. Yeah, thank you for uh leaving us the five-star review. And um yeah, I think even if you have an Android, it's technically I think you can go online mm-hmm. and leave a review with that Apple. Uh, yeah, you can create an account. podcast like app or their website too. Some people have left it that way, but mm-hmm. hey, listen through any means necessary. Any means, we'll take them all. Uh, five star love, and this is from Steve SF eighty six who says, "I stopped being lazy and I'm giving you the five stars you deserve." Thank you. Oh, five star. Okay, because we're worth it. We deserve it. We've earned it. Yes, and we, we appreciate have. y'all to take the time out to say, you know, bless ups. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Let's get to the comments on the website. Um, we had the first episode of the week, which was I just I guess it's just comments on the episode because I actually go to the website, Spotify, and YouTube. So mm-hmm. technically, it's all that. Uh, it's all that episode twenty seven twelve outrage advertising five comments happy from germany leaves the first two comments maybe things change how people comment less on their bodies i hope so my closest colleague for example and i've been to lunch together often have been to events together a lot and so on and we are about the same age we never comment on each other's body in any way or say anything about wanting to lose weight or how should i eat this or that or whatnot we order sometimes more sometimes less and just eat with no judgment i love it yeah, I think I know for me, 
it's interesting. I, I like I'm not a person that really causes waves, but it's interesting how much even when you just go out with somebody and you just casually want to do whatever, how much of the conversation is about like how much food you're consuming, how much weight you're gonna gain or lose, what you should or should not eat, like morally. It's just I don't know. It's like we're we're all hung up on it in a way. Um I like I and as a person that doesn't have those conversations, um I notice it. I just, I don't, I mean, like, I'll never shut it down to be like, listen, if you want to eat two pieces of chicken, you do that. You know, like, I'm, I'm like, well, it's between you and your mind, but I always find it interesting how much that occupies everybody's mind. And especially people that you would, um, it's a lot of times it's the people that you don't think will have that hang up because of how society makes you feel about them. Or you're like, oh, this person must feel great about their body and their appearance and all this stuff. But you know, a lot of even the people that quote unquote have the aesthetic, a lot of that is driven from the voice in their head that's constantly steering them one way or another or punishing them or whatnot. So, yeah, you know. agreed. And uh, when I was uh, younger, I would go out and like if it was somebody I wanted to press, we would go out and I would like get a salad or eat nothing and then get home and like consume everything. It's like, I got to the point where I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I want it. I'm going to order it. I actually don't care, you know, and that is a, a freedom in it in itself just to be able to go out with a friend and be like, you know what? Let's order a, 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 a shit and whatever we don't eat, we can just take it to go, you know, yeah. and shit like that without being like, I would have the water and a light vinaigrette. And there's nothing wrong with that if, if that's how you eat. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, it's, it's one of those things, but don't do it around me out of feeling of obligation. Yeah, like I said, it's just interesting because I think it's in our heads one way or the other. It's just how do people deal with it? Mm -hmm. What do they voice out loud? But uh, it seems to constantly be on people's minds. Uh, But yeah, I I love when I find people that don't like do that because it's not one, it's boring conversation. But then two, it's like we're we're setting a, to me, a somber or bad mood to the food and to the sitting down to eat because it's it's very rare that that ends up in a happy space it's right. either it's it's like because think about some of the comments right it's oh am i gonna be bad today so now you're saying what you're eating is 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 bad or a wrong choice and so if you do get the bad thing you're obligated to feel bad about it because that's what bad means is morally you need to feel bad if it's the i'm on a diet and then you start now we got to talk about your diet and, and if the, you're on a diet and you order a salad, I'm not gonna say shit. I'm not gonna be like, oh, I see you on a diet. Like me either. Totally fine. Um, it's the you know, it's the I shouldn't eat this, or it's the you know, this is gonna make me gain weight. Like it's to me, it's just normally that conversation doesn't put a positive spin on anything, it just dampens shit down. So yeah, it's it'll go straight to my thighs. My that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. So it's good that you were able, like, I'm glad you found a buddy that you could eat like lunch with and it's just not an issue and i i would like it would be dope if that was kind of the way because i also like even when i'm trying to like eat differently or better or more healthier or whatever art words you want to put around that i don't want people to comment on it right. like i'm not doing it for attention i'm not like i'm gonna get a salad because you here and i need you to tell me i'm a good person like i know like it's anyway it's just a lot going on in people's heads and it seems like a thing that isn't very helpful uh especially for strangers co-workers you know not love was not family you know right 15 years ago or so i'm sure there would have been some diet talk involved with eating with another woman at least sometimes i would never say anything about looks or somebody's body to them unless they really asked and even then i don't know if i would my go-to response is every single body is different and i hope this will be enough of a response Jocelyn said mindy Kaylin's brother pretended to be black to get into medical school so he is at least one man to do this um yeah but at the same time like that was his like one being indian counts as affirmative action the way he was voiced the way he was talking like he could have said i'm indian and he still would have qualified for uh the affirmative action he was talking about to get into medical school um and then the other thing too was like it's clearly from that reverse racism place of like black people have it easier women have it easier gay people have it easier and it's just like no statistical evidence Mm -hmm. backs that up ever 
and yet they still arrive at that conclusion. So my conclusion is you must just be racist. Right, because nothing else makes sense. Yeah, like, yeah, it's just coming out of a racist place where you think everybody has it easier than, you know, the in this case, the brown man. Uh, Black Slider 69 says, perhaps what Karen meant was that it's easier for white women to benefit from colorism while feigning blackness than a man. And that social beliefs of white desirability create the similar ranges of who all can represent a black woman versus who can represent black men. Is that what you meant, Karen? I, I don't I don't remember. <laughs> Those are a lot of big words <laughs> that I don't remember us saying, but I mean, I, I don't think you can divorce colorism from it. No, you can't. I just don't like it, I think colorism to me is like it's impossible to quantify and at the same time, it's impossible to discount. Like it, like I don't know the exact number. Like it's not as simple as like, and uh, for forgive me, but like say reparations, where you could be like, we know who counts as black in this country. We know what money was not given to these people. Colorism in a lot of cases definitely exists, has impact, mm-hmm. but either from lack of study, lack of care from the complexity of certain types of colorism where in some way it can benefit you in some way it can hurt you i think you end up in these spaces where um we know it works to be light-skinned and desirable quote unquote to whiteness amenable to whiteness familiar to whiteness in america uh shit actually globally colorism is not just an american thing Mm but and it's not just a black thing but Mm -hmm. the point being like it's such a huge, complicated thing that what normally happens in these conversations, we cherry pick one or two things. It'd be like, Cardi B wouldn't have been famous if she was dark skinned. Maybe we're right. Maybe we're not. But the point being, like, we get stuck on Cardi B, not like, oh, you look around the industry and there's many, many, many light skinned women rappers and very few dark skinned women, women rappers. And then when you look at those dark skinned women rappers, the amount of talent and stuff they have to do to even like compete is different and the amount of effort and how good they got to be is different. There's no version of this where they can't be excellent, you know, but at the same time, there's not a lot of white women rappers compared to men that can just be like some stumble rappers that ain't good. You got to be pretty much better than your male counterparts. So you got to deal with that. Then you also got to talk about desirability just because people want to fuck you doesn't necessarily mean it's empowering. So what do you do when like the industry of black of women rappers trades off of sex in a lot of ways and sex appeal? And we know there's double standards of sex and sex appeal when it comes to light skin versus dark skin. But at the same time, we know that that's not truly an empowering thing for everybody. And that may not quantify the money for everybody. Some people just don't want to be objectified in that way. So I bring all that up to say like, it's it can be extremely complicated and not just a, one-to-one thing and i think that's why these discussions kind of can be uh convoluted uh but at no point do i think the fact that a white woman passing as black has no choice but to be a light-skinned black person right that she's pretending to be at no point do i think it that doesn't matter it doesn't count that's definitely a part of it oh yeah and it's a complex and it's a deep argument it's also one of those things where we started like i said i was opening up my third eye so, you know, a lot of times when you open up your third eye, you don't actually go into the in, into the deep dive that you would have if you mm. would have had time to actually, you know, for me personally, look and, and actually analyze it like a little bit better. Mm. So, you know, uh, the way I articulate articulated myself was more of based off of how I. Um, as but like this, I still do feel a certain way, but I do understand it is a complex conversation. Yeah, because I, like I, I'm trying to remember what you said. Was it like people just want to fuck them or something? Mm-mm. I can't remember what it was that started no. this whole thing. Oh, because I was talking. We was talking about the you was you were basically you were asking him, why is it only that white women are the ones? Yeah, that yeah, okay, right, yeah. Right. Why isn't it men? Yeah, right. And my thing is. You know, because of their like, it's a complex answer because of their proximity to whiteness, mm-hmm. because of their 
Uh, so they know how to work the system because mm -hmm. they know that when it comes to minorities, uh, the white people that want to be the good white people won't turn around and call them out, even though they know sometimes it, sometimes these people aren't white, aren't black, you know, and then there are black people that, you know, uh, uh, look and even for sometimes we might even know too, you mm -hmm. know. So, like I said, it's a very complex yeah. thing. But I, but and my thing, I also say how they rise a lot of time in academia, you know. Um, and I think you was like, I think the thing may have been with academia, academia specific. We might have went, you know, died because mm -hmm. we were kind of all over the place when we was talking about that thing, mm -hmm. about about that conversation. And my thing is, it's like these women are all over the place, but you know, the prominent ones are the ones a lot of times that are in these academic areas, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I doubt I said anything to dismiss colorism or whatever. So I hope that's not what happened. I, I literally don't remember the whole conversation as that detail, but, uh, cause I know we got sidetracked and into mm -hmm. some tangents, but I definitely think them being light skin have something to do with it. It's just like a comfortableness of whiteness. Like, you make me feel more comfortable than a dark skinned woman saying the same shit. Right. Even if you're more militant, more angry. And I think, yeah, it is complex. Cause like mm -hmm. part of it to me is their performance of blackness is a performance that happened. That's now I'm remembering to me, it's their performance of blackness is a performance that is happening through the lens of whiteness because they are white people. So they see what they think black success and black, authentic blackness looks like and it's a fucking caricature that yes. is that is it pisses me off so much because they always are the people that take the step that we wouldn't take and i don't mean that in a good way right like the people that that do the destructive shit and 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 even as a black person in my mind i'll be thinking like well what kind of black person would do something that would like like what kind of thing is that that seems very weird and then later when you discover they're like a secret white woman you're like oh that's why Right, right. You know, you couldn't just be a member of the NAACP. You had to be the head of NAACP. Like, one thing people don't remember about Rachel Dolo's out. This always, I always come back to this, and people will forget it the second I say it. By the way, you, I'm telling it right now. The kind of people that are kind of like uh, go back to this defense of her will forget this part. She got caught stealing money. That's what the fucking first yes, part of this was. Did. Like that was the audacity to me. Was like. So y'all think this one was a hero. This started because people were like, what's up with the money? And it's like, well, she was trying to help them by stealing money. That was that's what the fucking accusations were anyway. When it was like a mailbox, a PO yes, box. Yes, yes. I remember like, that. Yes. Her being a fake black woman was secondary. Mm -hmm. And yet you I got told she uplifted the people and all this shit. And that's the other part that we didn't talk about too, is when they are out at a lot of times the people that be in her fucking in their fucking corner are these weird ass reverse racism of you know uh, a white woman she's such a good white woman she was trying to help us yeah but she was trying to help us in the academics or in the NWSB and the activism and it's like so she had to be black right and 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 and, that, and that's the part where uh I'm just keeping it real with me being a black woman, I'm gonna go fuck you bitch you know that you could have actually been white and 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 not and not had a problem been white and walked in these same circles yeah. and uh, could have used your white privilege to help us yes and and that's why people go you you pretending to have my skin and that's one of those things where it frustrates you how they go everybody want to be black but they don't want to be black like like yeah. like you want the you quote unquote you want the what you think are benefits but what you don't want is the oppression what you don't want is being called nigger what you don't want is is all the other shit I, I that think, goes along I think, with blackness i think they do want that shit cuz they think that's what real authentic blackness is i think they even act that way cuz they think they add that to their bonafides they love to get called the n word they love that to be like see how black i am how good i am at being black you know, that's why you always see them arguing online and shit. Perform it's like such a histrionic performance of wanting all the smoke in a way that I think that's what it is. I think that's what it is for me. It's such a histrionic performance of wanting all the smoke. It feels more like a Karenism version of black, where it's like I like I want to be this victim because I'm actually at the fundamentally, I'm actually not that concerned about my safety in this way. 
Rock in a way that a black person that really has dealt with the backlash of standing up yes there's a level of like self-preservation in there that's like all right now these i'm not trying to die like i don't want y'all to kill me right i just would like y'all to leave me the fuck alone and let me like give us our rights and leave us alone and there's yes i think that's what it is um i know it's like a messy way of saying it but anyway but maybe in spaces where black women are routinely discredited white men's massage noir leads them to Dismiss suspicion they have for women pretending to be black because they have little respect for blackness to begin with. Anyway, good to see justice system getting to the bottom of RB secret sauce. Yeah, it's a complicated thing. Everything you brought up, I mean, is definitely something to think about. Um, and yeah, it is interesting. You just don't see a lot of men doing it. The only mm-hmm. man I know that gets accused of doing it is uh, Sean King. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I... <laughs> to god do not know i have no idea i know i know we supposed to hate him and shit i honestly god do not know mm-hmm. if that man's black or not and just of the reasons to not like him that seemed to be like on near the, the bottom. bottom yeah on the bottom. um for the people that don't like him it just seems to be like a running joke at this point mm-hmm. and i don't know if that it's a joke that took on a life of his own or if it actually is true i don't know um and yeah i'll just leave it at that Pamela M.A. says, did I watch the Trump Town Hall? Not only hell no, but as my mom said once, hell fucking no. She said that in response to the photo opportunity for him, obviously not her, with, with then Indiana Governor Mike Pence. <laughs> my limited attention is better paid anywhere, elsewhere. Thank you, Pamela. Yeah, I don't blame you. And shout out to your mama. Yeah, I was on the Karen Hunter show yesterday and Trump came up and I just casually, because I'm so used to being over here, Mm-hmm. being free and not really worried about who the fuck hears what I have to say because right. I, I stand by what I say. Right. And so I just casually was like, yeah, man, fuck, like I hate him or whatever. She was like, well, let's talk about that. You hate him? I was like, uh, yeah, yes. I didn't misspeak. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't say that in a term. I do not I, like that man. Like I, I was like, I'm keeping it cute. Right, because I really want to say fuck him. Not just fuck him. That's not what I'm talking about. I was like, I'm keeping it cute because, like, I was like, I could talk about what I don't like about him for 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Like, right, like I'm giving you the the one minute version right. and saying so we can move on with the show because it's seen it'll be ridiculous to sidetrack your show mm-hmm. with with my amount of disdain I have for this man. But it's years and years of disdain I have for right. this man, and I never was for him. Like, Mm-mm. not even on some like. When hip hop in New York loved Trump, I didn't get it. Not when he had a reality didn't show. I didn't get it. I never thought he was funny. Mm-mm. I just so for me, it's like I don't, you know. But I forgot for a second, like you know, there's people that uh, she has a big platform, so there's mm-hmm. people that be on her YouTube page harassing her and mm-hmm. leaving fucked up comments, and yep. she got to block people and stuff. Like so, you know. Hopefully, I didn't add no extra work to her plate right. for that shit but it's just like you know that's how the way your mama said that about mike pence that's how i'll be feeling like uh-uh fuck him right who we ain't, we ain't trying to play no games and and also it's just one of them things you know like i said from the very beginning i i've always been like oh not him yeah and i meant that and i'm you know and i stand behind it eve says nothing will stop me from and, and for the record i don't i'm not as militant as a lot of people and that there are Republicans who I think are bad people who had bad policies, who hurt people and everything. And I still don't feel as strongly as disdain for them as I feel for Trump. Agreed. Like, I still think they fucked up. They're bad people and I don't support their presidency. I never voted for them. And But if it were a hierarchy of bad, there's Republicans where I'm like, you bad, but yeah, you weren't Trump bad. Agreed. He literally like one of the worst ones. He's He's, he's like you know the, the 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 segregation now segregation forever dude to me yes he is like I, I don't know how people still think it's cute and how he can just run again and yet some of y'all are gonna vote for this man that's under like criminal indictment right uh, crim- under criminal investigation and just lost a civil case about being a sexual assaulter mm-hmm. and y'all just think that's cute i don't get it right that, i think it's funny mm-mm uh ev says nothing will stop me from eating arby's not even a dead body in the freezer they were framed people are jealous because they had the meats <laughs> all i'm saying your truth all i'm saying is ev i hope you support our podcast or you support arby's that's all i'm saying yes because we done way more for you than arby's ever will and if if somebody ever say some shit about us i hope you 
are on their neck, living, yes. fighting on that lot the way you fight on this Arby fly. Eve like Arby's now, Arby's forever. <laughs> uh, sorry. The let's see the episode comments on YouTube is outrage advertising. Um, do we only do four episodes or do I just not upload one to YouTube? And I didn't know that on me. All right, we'll, we'll do that later tonight. You know, I've been busy, y'all. <laughs> Honestly, I, I just show note next week probably won't have any episodes, if not maybe one. Uh, just I got a lot going on, so I'm busy, busy, busy. Uh, so comments on this one, nothing on outrage advertising on YouTube. Um, but on the poll, did you watch the Trump Town Hall? Yes or no. 97.5% of our audience did not. 2.5% did, which, I mean, checks out. CNN's ratings weren't even good for that. Mm-mm. So they did it for nothing. Thirsting for nothing. They and bought them over there and it didn't even fucking matter. And it's always because of their own, like, concept of what white people want. Uh, I'm not trying to give white people too much credit, quote unquote, in that way. Like, I'm not, put it this way. I'm not, what I'm about to say next is not about like patting anyone on the back. Put it that, that, I'm talking about accuracy. White people don't love racism in mass nearly as much as people think. Now, that doesn't mean whiteness or white power, that, that structure is not real or anything. I'm saying just the average fucking white person. Right. Is not sitting around like, well, he going to be on CNN shit. I got to stop and do it. I'm, fuck that, baby. Mm-hmm. And and it's always those people that they're courting. And I don't know that that's a big group of people. Even the Trump wave, quote unquote, to me is not a Trump wave as much as it's a small percentage of sycophants that will support anything Trump does. And then the GOP political party and the people that vote for them capitulating to that small percentage of people almost like a tea party thing like mm-hmm. oh my god we're so scared of this, this like we need this small percentage to help us it's win a small percentage so we just gotta do what they say but when it you look at the ratings you can't do that cnn especially you can't serve two masters here if they want donald trump on a pedestal and to see him rant and say lies they'll rather just get that shit either straight from the source or from the fucking TV channels that have been supporting them forever. Mm-hmm. And they'll just rather go there. They Those people already made their brand on Trump. Yes, and they are not coming to CNN to get it. Even as Fox... No, I mean the the, the, the companies, not the people. Okay. Not the, not the listeners. Okay. The, like, Fox made their brand Trump yes, for four did. years, and now they're trying to wash it out. OAN or whatever fucking else conservative news. They're down with it. Like, if people want Trump they're content, they go in there. They're not going to you ever. This is Bud Light selling fucking rainbow beers right now. Right. And all that happens is that your your fan base that came over here, it went, the fuck you got Trump on here for? You've pissed them off and turned them off. And they was like, I will not watch your ass again. Stupid. All right. right. Anyway. Um, so, and then it's even worse on Spotify. 1% yes, 99% no. Like nobody and watched it with the money, and they was like, "Oh no, no, no!" The episode Q and A, Janelle Monet. That is all. That is all. That, Shay that says. Is all. Shay says, "Titty Gate 2023 was a wild ride." <laughs> I wouldn't know. They talked about that shit for a fucking week. Yeah, I had a tweet go a little bit viral because Megan Thee Stallion posted like a super cut video of her working out, and I said, uh, <laughs> "Janelle Monet has started the nuclear arms race." <laughs> I started an arms race, not nuclear. I said Janelle Monet has started an arms race, and people kept retweeting it. And then one reply that kept being retweeted was like something to the effect of, um, uh, well, it was something to the effect of, I forget. It was like people trying to, people do this all the time. They try to punch up your joke, but your joke is already good. Mm-hmm. Or they reveal they didn't understand the joke. And so people was like, it's not a, it's not an arms race. It's a this. And so I replied to this person and I was like, because they didn't understand what I was saying. I was like, uh, it's going to be a lot of arms racing, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it was like, oh, oh. Like, yeah, <laughs> it was a little more clever than you thought. Uh, Marvin says, that is all. That is plenty. 
Raphael says, I seen a teaser of that lipstick video. Ooh, let me tell you, I just feel like I need to baby oil myself up before I watch that <laughs> video. I'll go do some gardening instead. That's one fine sister. Uh, yeah, she's been fine. She's been bad. I know all that. She, I've seen the movies. I know she used to, you know, uh, uh, dress like. Uh, yeah, they used to joke her for dressing like that too. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. I, and I know she had like a whole thing behind that about like the the people that run elevators or some shit. I don't know. I I wasn't always a huge fan of her music like that, so I can't even, you know. I know that she dropped a whole album that was just like vagina imagery and shit, just like two two or three years ago. So I knew she was like a sexual being a person mm-hmm. but she kept a lot of her stuff very androgynous and now she's decided at this point in her life this phase whatever she's in is the one about showing everybody what was under them monopoly man clothes and yeah I, everybody's here for it and i think it's okay for people to be like yeah i'm a little surprised like everyone's acting like oh you didn't know no they, they didn't know she like show me the picture when she had her titties out before this. It it, it really did, is it new was, for a lot yeah, of people, it was everybody. Not out there, right. Okay. She's she's you know, so I think people are enjoying this shit and I think it's it's beautiful and it's dope. She's just I being free. Too. Um Aaron says a queen. Uh and right and also I've never had nothing bad to say about her before. So it's mm-hmm. not like a, some type of flip of like she need to go ahead and take off them clothes or whatever. Like if she wanted, she can do whatever she if she was still dressing up in suits i'd still be like i know she a bad woman and that's it like that's it anyway shout out to her she definitely figured out the pr machine though because she was trending people was fucking with the album the single all mm-hmm. all kinds of hype now that you know is even more than her last one aaron says a queen roger says miss monet if you nasty and ramel says anderson pock voice yes lord um all right let's go to the next episode it was 2714. Guns are people. But before that, let me play some music so I remember to put a com- commercial here. <laughs> Now that I look back, it's like Janelle Monet had a lot of restraint. Mm-hmm. You think about it. Like she just sitting on some perfect titties and wasn't using them. Like almost every other artist, they had some. I don't even if it was Rick Ross. If you got some perfect titties, you got to throw them things out there. Like, hey, buy my album. It's like the <laughs> easiest promotion you're going to ever Hello. have. Yes. It's better than making good music. Everybody is on team perfect titties. Anyway. Episode 2714, <laughs> Guns Are People. Ramsey D. Jenkins says, in the can we can't use that as a title. In the <laughs> I was gonna say team perfect titties. I see you writing it down. I don't know. What's go- what's the worst thing in heaven? Well, I guess we'll find out. Uh <laughs> Ramsey D. Jenkins says, in the words of Silk Sonic, this bitch, that city bike female tried it five stars. Uh not female. I guess it's okay if Ramsey says she. I don't know the rules. Let me move on. I don't know the rules. <laughs> I don't know the rules. Uh, open letter to the Vatican says, Sean Vatican, please get your shit together. JL has it tough. His first, <laughs> first now technically second special has been in the can for over two years. He is recovering from sur- shoulder surgery. Having to sca- catch strays on the blackout tips because you keep doing messed up stuff is not good for his mental health. Please, for the love of God, get your shit together. And it's that Rick and Morty get your shit together YouTube clip. You know, uh, mm-hmm. I think we've all heard it. Oh, they, they got no sound. Mm. Sorry, everybody. I forgot I was in. Forgot I was in Chrome. Anyway, the get your shit together clip. You'll listen to it later on audio, and you'll hear it. 
Sean says about unschooling. Oh, and um, listen, JL catches strays, but he want to catch them. Okay, <laughs> I'm helping JL. <laughs> okay, y'all don't understand. This man is a content machine. Whenever some bad happened to him, so how can I, as anything less than a friend, a colleague? How can I do anything other than denigrate this man for the content? He, like, it's a reason that he's going to thank us when that special comes out in 2073. Ah! <laughs> I'm sure we'll be in a lot of notes. I'll be 75 years old. We'll be dead, you know? <laughs> but I still want my but, shout out, Jay. Yeah, we'll be dead. Go, and, go ahead and tap, type it up, put it in chat GPT and save it. That special gonna come out, and it's, everybody's gonna be like, "Oh, that maybe it was, it was like Muhammad Ali and and uh, what was it like Foreman Frazier, the one that he was always uh, shitting on." It's gonna, it's gonna be like that. Yeah, JL gonna get that JL right when he, he's not gonna be be here to receive it. Okay, he's got. Listen, he's between me and Marvel movies. I'm giving this man a lot of shit known things content. <laughs> okay. <laughs> About unschooling. Unschooling or deschooling is an approach that was innovated by Ivan Illich in 1971, if I remember correctly. Basically, it means that you educate based on the shifting interests of the child rather than by imposing a curriculum. It can be effective, but the homeschooling, unschooling movement is kind of bunk as the parents don't have the expertise to actually carry out unschooling in a way that will lead to an educated, well-rounded individual. Too long didn't read. Unschooling is BS wrapped in a veneer of actual pedagogic, pedagogic, wait, pedagogical theory. Ooh. I was unschooled. I didn't know that a word. Vocab- vocabulations. Um, yeah, the thing also too is like I think those people took it to some type of weird extreme of like we're not gonna teach them to read unless they show an interest in it. It's like I don't. Well, if you don't start with this, even Little House on the Prairie taught kids how to read. I mean, you don't start that shit. You know, be cavemen. Just stop being stupid. Oh, and then you end the paper like for attention. Anyway, Abby says facts about Germany. Homeschooling is not allowed. All kids have to attend school for at least nine years. I support this rule. I also see something good in the cards on priests, even if it's not a solution. I'm an ex-Catholic and don't go to church. But knowing that something like this exists, it's harder to ignore that it's a big problem, makes the priests less untouchable, and hopefully they will touch less children. I agree. (laughs) (laughs) That's my favorite type of children, touch less children. Yes, please. EVE says the people who voted for DeSantis are in the finding out process of the consequences of voting for him. Except the ultra mega super diehard racist people are concerned with the lack of day laborers and fruit pickers. And now Disney is shutting down a project that could have brought thousands of jobs to the state. Funny thing is, some Latinos who voted for him are now looking to black people to join them in their fight against him. Latinos overwhelmingly voted for him in the last election. There was a TikTok of a Latino woman asking for black people's help. Black people tried to help by warning them in the first place. They always want us to do the labor when the time gets hard, but when things are cool, they distance themselves from blackness. Yeah, that's true. That is true. I don't know that individual ladies thing, and obviously I know it's an individual thing for the most part. And there's a lot of Latino people that do vote uh, Democrat and are liberal and all that stuff, so I don't want to like paint the with a broad swath, but I do hate the idea of farming out the work to black people. Tell you like this, dog. Do it yourself. And I don't mean do it yourself in the mean dismissive way. I mean it in the, you can depend on yourself. Build those inroads within your own community. So you won't have to be farming out the, hey, you guys are activists, right? Nah, that's not how that works. Because we're going to do what's in our interest too. You know, the reason, even this reason that you see a lot of the activism from Black people in America, especially around voting and Democrat is a survival thing it's not a democrat thing really Mm -hmm. it's not a loyalty thing Mm -mm. we're we're looking out for us Mm -hmm. now you may benefit from us looking out for us right because people move off the backs of civil rights movements and and activist movements and all the time but at the end of the day the movements was for us it's the same way i feel about the whole vote like black women black women voting like themselves they voting for them they're not they're not trying to save the country. Stacey Abrams isn't running to save you. It's not what the fuck she's doing. You know, it's like everybody's motivated by self-interest on some point. So the question you got to look around and say, why are the people in my group so less self-interested or why do they believe their interest lies in 
whatever conservatism is giving them and or at worst why do they believe their interest a lot uh, aligns with people that are giving them so little you know if you're if your interest aligns with somebody because they're i don't know say anti-immigrant but that means you also are giving cover to anti-lgbtq anti uh anti-black uh anti uh whatever other categories you got to look at that first thing you did and be like i voted for this person because i also don't want immigrants coming to america did i fuck up don't say black people can you fix it did i fuck up and go talk to the people within your community that fucked up because you're gonna reach them before we can they just see some angry black people coming right because we're not a part of that group and that makes complete sense and it's you know and it's also uh uh one of those things where for a lot of uh black and brown people and 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 it i understand people's argument and i understand people's frustration with our political system here in america but it is what we have and until something happens to change it where you get this magical third party or this division or whatever it is uh it is what it is you know Mm -hmm. so i you know it frustrates me i put like this it frustrates me you know uh because i understand people's disappointment in the system and shit like this but when it comes to certain things i don't believe in they're the same because they're not i don't believe in uh 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 you know we got to pick the 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 worst of two evils because that's not so the you best, know, yeah, the better too. Yeah, the better. I, that's that's not so. Uh, I don't believe in any of that because at the, at the end of the day, one group is trying to kill me, and the other one, I'm not trying to say that that they're perfect, but what they're not doing, you know, most of them, most of them, you know, uh, is coming out here and saying, you know, racism now, racism forever. That they're not doing that. So to me, the decision is easy, you know. But a lot of people when they come to it they're disenfranchised which i understand that and they're frustrated and they're upset at the way the system is but unless the system changes the reality is you have to look at the system that we are in and work within the system and if it's that important to you to have this magical other party third party political party do something about that like start a ground route, go in, start applying for dog catch a school system, make some inroads. Don't be like the motherfucking Green Party. And the only time your fucking ass show up is that for presidential elections. Like, I'm not trying to be funny. Like, if you really want these changes, you have to do something other than complain about the system that we have. And then don't really do anything or start a ground route thing to start this act, this other system. Because I do believe these other systems can exist, but the people have got to be willing to do something about it. I don't think- just complaining i don't even think they're talking about creating another system these people in florida are like ron DeSantis is making our lives terrible black people come save us so that's not even about the the super wild left-wing progressive start a new system we need socialism that's a very simple like we're not doing the minimum here and our community is on the wrong side of this thing percentage wise right okay well then y'all have the work to do because i don't know your community like that and if your community already voted for desantis part of the reason they probably voted for him is seeing black activists out there and feeling some level of resentment Mm -hmm. so y'all take y'all ass out there y'all got to do it it's not like i you can't you're we you're not joining our fight and we're not joining yours if that's how you move because what you really say let come do the work for us. That's not joining a fight. Mm-mm. Start the fight. People will show up. Black people will show up. We be there. We, like so this. go ahead and start the fight. We we will be there, and and that's the thing. Yes, we put ourselves first when it comes to this, but we don't. We will reach out to other people. Yeah. But at the same time, we're not going to do the labor that you actually need to do in your community. Yeah. So that shit don't move me. No, no offense mm-hmm. to that lady, and I hope she gets her state back. I, I live in a state like that too, but mm-hmm. I don't look around and go, who's coming to save us? We got to do it. Uh, when black people on TikTok told her she's on her own, she said, that's why black people can't be saved. People got in her ass and she had to delete her entire account. Yeah, see, that type of, she wanted some labor. I feel bad for the people who didn't vote for that clown, but the ones who did, this is what they wanted and if what they're getting. Yeah, I f- definitely feel bad. And I do, 
the th the biggest thing I think we underestimate in this situation are the people that vote for him get the consequences, but still don't feel different. They no, they do not. That's what I'm. That's my adult life. The realization I came to is how often and how many times people are like, "Nah, I, I actually am okay with everything that's happening because I care so much about whatever that first thing was." Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. like I won't back down I won't change my mind mm -hmm. I won't accept any facts that don't align with what I believe nope. and what I believe is what I did was right we need Ron DeSantis yep I don't care about my family and friends getting deported I don't care about you know my my, my loved ones getting separated family members people to look like me I don't care I am here for this and I'm going to stick with it Tim Simmons says the way I cackle when Ron said no palate cleanser that was a very rough fucking with black people so I needed that laugh as a lifelong in wire I totally agree that even in this multicultural city, we aren't immune to the racism all over the country, this country. Much as I travel, I have only heard the hard ER said to me near my home or spray painted on the side of my house. I had to pause the episode for a bit and go put on my Quest headset for a palate cleanser. Thank you for sharing your insights and laughs. That unschooling story was wild. Thanks, Sim Sima. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, is racism not just a Southern thing? I think Karen always harps on it almost every time the topic comes up and that's why you know because it's true every time it's not like it's a lie I, I i will be relentless when it when it comes to that because you're not trying to be funny you let the rest of the country tell it and particularly people that don't live here a lot of people have a lot of myths about the south mm -hmm. and how it functions and how it rolls and every time something comes up it's all oh, them people down south bitch they're in your state too they are in the timbuktu nowhere wherever you stay no matter how far up north or out west or whatever this little town's in the middle of two timbuktu fucking nowhere to feel the same goddamn way yep not wrong um i just realized i did the episode out of order we'll do my mom's episode next uh my fault everybody uh so then the poll was catholic clergy id cards this will fix it this will help fix it. This won't do anything or this will make it worse. I'm not even sure how it makes it worse, but uh, the poll percentage, 0% think this will fix it. 8.82% uh, uh, think this will help fix it, like step in the right direction. 73.5% say it ain't going to do nothing. And somehow 17% think it'll make it worse. Not sure how, but sure. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, honestly, they got a track record of, <laughs> I don't know, they got a track record of of of, of a longer history of try, of letting it be worse than fixing it. So, And then uh, the same poll on Spotify, 3% think it'll fix it. 1% think it'll help fix it. 78% say it won't do anything, and 18% say it'll, it'll make it worse. Uh, let's check comments real quick on YouTube if there was any uh, for... Uh, like I said, I did this out of order, so this would be oh, guns are people. Okay, so we got a couple comments. My mom said the sword jokes were fire about the missing hand. A absurd spoonful said free range kids. Karen was obviously not here for the unschooling parents. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> um, and then uh, the 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 poll. Oh no, that Q and A. Dracaris was the true Q and A because I was so mad. Although, oh, I forgot to revisit this. And since we're probably not gonna do a lot of episodes this week, I guess I'll say it here. But new more information came out. The lawyer of the woman who was accused of stealing the bike, trying to steal the bike, came out with what I think is they believe is her side of the story but for me it just made me confused and it had a very jonathan majors releasing the text feel for me <laughs> like it didn't make me go it, it oh okay that like i was just like what what and so more confusing more questions actually yeah and i said i was confused on twitter now of course i shouldn't have said it on twitter because twitter is very you know pile on they no thought no 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 don't breathe you just fucking hate this bitch hate her hate her god damn it you better well you coon if you don't hate her you know so it's like all right that's how they be it was like they were scared i was gonna flip sides or some shit it's like everybody calm the fuck down i'm just reading the article trying to be like what happened, happened right what happened i'm sorry i don't i don't have experience with the the check-in check-out bike thing so i don't know how it works so the they were like she has receipts 
for that particular bike, supposedly, a minute apart, showing she did reserve, like, pay for that bike on her phone, I guess, through an app. This is what I've all learned, because I've never done this before. Mm-mm. And my thing is, like, well, then how did the other dude think he paid for the bike if she if she paid for the bike? Also, why didn't she say in the video at some point she paid for the bike? Is I know it's just it's a video like any other. Starts at a time, ends at a time. That can mean a bunch of shit. Mm-hmm. They didn't record the part where she did say that. Yeah, it could mean that you know uh, it could be a computer glitch. It could be a bunch of shit. They could have cut out that part. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because you know we get videos. These kind of viral, out of context. These videos go viral. They go viral all the time. We give a hot take. We fill in and predict and project onto them and shit. And so. You know, and I'm sure to some level that's what we were doing. You know, I, I have to be transparent about that. I think I even mm-hmm. said at the time, which is like just seeing this mm-hmm. is just so fucking like God, like it just makes you so mad. But okay, that does sound unreasonable and kind of ridiculous if she was walking by a group of black dudes and randomly decided I'm taking one of their bikes, fuck them. Just in a bunch of for a bunch of reasons. For a bunch mm-hmm. of reasons. This article was not really giving you those reasons. What they were really saying was, she's pregnant. I think they mentioned she was pregnant like 10 times. I was like, what the fuck? They got to do with anything. She's, okay, she's pregnant. Well, a pregnant woman can't be racist? I don't understand. Um, the other thing is they don't really explain like why she tried to do the fake crying, why she's no, yelling for help. Like, don't like justify none of those actions. Like she's under attack or whatever. That That's weird. Why it had to be that bike. Um, and so, and look, maybe those black kids were being assholes. I don't know how it works 100%. It sounded like somehow she thought she paid for to have to get this bike, I guess using the phone, using the app. They took the bike, put it back in a dock, which immediately resets everything. Like her, her card is no longer on it. His car is not on it. I don't know. He must have put his card on it or something, and or she did it again or whatever. Once again, this article didn't didn't br- didn't really say what the how it worked because it was so intent on giving her excuses mm-hmm. that it didn't want to say like because I'm assuming it's some level of misunderstanding or some level of somebody being a jerk. Either she was a jerk, walked up to this dude and tried to take a bike that she knew he was about to get, mm-hmm. or he was being a jerk, saw she was about to get a bike, put it back, and said, "I want that bike." It's one of those two. Nobody's saying shit. Right, but it does not excuse her behavior afterwards. You stash this phone. You're, you're doing fake crime. You you know, like, so it still fucks with me and it still bothers me. I just would like some context for why the fuck it happened. You know, because I know in our minds it's simple enough. It's just uh, the explanation for most people that's on our side. It's simple enough to just white lady just went white lady. You know, they be racist. No reason. Walking down the street, decided to be racist, couldn't help herself. And I'm like, that's probably not what happened. But what the fuck did happen? And yeah, I still feel like you went over the top and tried to use your white fragility to 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 like get something to happen to you, black men. And that's going to bother me every time. Yes, you did. Regard- and I try to find it regardless of what happened up, up front. Yeah. Anyway, Dracarys. Uh, a rare triple Dracarys episode. Fuck it with black people is my favorite segment. But yeah, you was wild in this episode, said Carrie. <laughs> Joy said, as a lifelong Floridian, fuck Florida. Coach Mike Malik says, moms for liberty. DeSantis bottom bitches right there. <laughs> God damn. That's so funny, though. They don't care about kids or education, but they stay showing up at a school board meeting talking shit. Dracarys. Dracarys on white crime, still in devil. I thought the thieves had on it. Dracarys on the POS DeSantis. <laughs> Dracarys on all such school districts that only care about white children feelings, your cars on Rudy G. Uh, what does this mean? I've been meaning to ask, says Aaron, your cars. Um, it is the word that uh, in Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. the word that dragon riders use, riders, dragon riders use to uh, command their dragon to blow flames and burn something. somebody up. So they say Dracarys, and then it the, it shoots flames. So. Yeah, I'm normally mispronouncing it. Yeah, so it's so racist that we're like, set this whole bitch on fire. Mm-hmm. That's what it means. Uh, Shane says, the ice cream couple is lying. Who eats ice cream and milk at the same time? Mm, that's a good point. Good point. 
Uh, Jane says a hat trick of Dracarys. Also, first, the West Virginia West uh, radio host fired for airing the basketball coach uh, homo uh, homophobic slur. And now the black student suspended for recording the geometry teacher shaking my head. Mm -mm -mm. I know. What a day we had. Mm -hmm. All right. Episode 2713. Out of order. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> it's called Once You Go Black, They Cut You Some Slack. It's with my mom. <laughs> J.L. Covan writes in. Big J.L. Covan. <laughs> Big Ben, James. What has he done? Oh, He's got eight. <laughs> Jail Coven says, when Rod said Nick Cannon is in the news and his mom said, again, my brain immediately heard the coronavirus song star. <laughs> Here we go again. We got children. <laughs> <laughs> we keep on not pulling it out. We leaving it in. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Cannon wearing the turban. Oh. <laughs> um number two <laughs> i was wrong thinking i feel like we we could have our remix of nick cannon news yes, again um number two <laughs> i was uh wrong thinking that perhaps the sunday truce would hold and rod would not have me catching strays on a mother's day sunday in the presence of his mother but i guess nothing is sacred anymore to be clear for the many people who do not listen to my podcast, my discussion of pedophiles on the episode of my show was in the context of A, finding out a beloved teacher at my elementary school was arrested for child porn pics, and B, the idea of Christian forgiveness being tough for the worst offenders. Now, of course, almost no one really practices this. The Dylan Roos victim family members offering him forgiveness is a good, rare example of Christians actually practicing this. I was reflecting on this. Yeah, but then, you know. They uh they caught a lot of hell for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think what the Pope was speaking of was the idea of earthly punishment versus spiritual forgiveness. I'm aware that a lot of this might sound like nonsense to plenty. Just want to make sure people who don't know me don't think I'm out here lobbying for Nambla in DC. <laughs> Q Rod saying that that's exactly what a Nambla lobbyist would say. It is. it is what they would say. I'm just glad that Pope Francis did not say. That we must tolerate or love Angel Reese for her unforgivable mistreatment of Caitlyn Clark. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's what I'm saying, though, right? Like, JL is such an angry, honorary man, you know, just such an unforgiving, you know, type of dude. To hear him, you know, make the case for never forgiving Ted Lasso, but somehow pedophiles get a pass. I mean, it's just hard to listen to. It's just hard. It's, <laughs> sounds ridiculous to me, and it sounds exactly what the Nambla lobbyists would say, but that's just me. Other people hear different things. Uh, Evie says, it's always great to hear Mama Morrow. I hope she could come back for a non... I, I'm going to say this also for JL, though, because I'm if you're just a listener to our show, you don't listen to his, or vice versa, uh, then maybe people don't get the inside joke of it or whatever, and I hate to break the fourth wall like that, but... Um, I give him grief because he listens to the show. But also, like, for me, friendship and familiarity is in kind of being able to to, to make jokes with your friends about shit. Mm -hmm. um, and I know he's one of the, you know, handful of people that kind of can speak that language a bit. Yeah. Because I, I don't do that with everybody, to mm -hmm. be honest. Cause nope, because everybody can't take my it. My motherfuckers can't take it and they can't take it back, you yeah, know. Yeah, they, they do it, but they can't take it back. And then it's a big ass falling out. And you're yeah. like, okay, I should have never started this with you. You know, like I listen to his show and he'll make uh, uh, The Righteous Prick. He'll make a joke about me. And honestly, I'll be in real fucking tears. I'll be like, that's, that's funny. That's good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because if it's funny, it's funny. I don't. I'm, you know, so uh, that's that's why I I pick on JL and uh, vi you know, I know he listens and, and stuff like that. I'm sure y'all that don't listen or don't care, are like, why this nigga always talking about JL Covey? Just my friend, and I know he listens, and that's it. It's that simple. Ev says it's always great to hear Mama Mara. I hope she can break. Uh, she can come back for a nine Mother's Day episode. She's always welcome. The door is always open. Um, you know, her and my dad both look forward to that one time a year and mm -hmm. uh you know that they don't really ask to be on the show any other time but it's always available they they be looking forward they'll they'll hit us up uh you know beforehand going yeah. I, i'm still on yes you 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 are penciled in permanently 
Uh, Brian McKnight better hope he never needs a kidney and his older kids aren't matches. His, he's lucky his wife isn't a Tyler Perry movie because if it was, she's going to lose her hair, have to wear a bad wig. His current wife leaves him and takes all his money and he gets AIDS. Oh, no! I don't think Nick Nick Cannon is... Uh, oh, I, I said wife. Life. Yeah, you're right. I don't think Nick Cannon is any better as a father. There's no way you can have 12 kids in six different households and be there for the emotional needs of each of those children. Money doesn't mean anything to a kid who just wants his dad. And by his own admission, he goes to the house of the mother who calls him. It doesn't it doesn't sound like he takes the initiative to see those kids regularly. I hope we don't start getting memoirs from his kids when they reach eight, the age of adulthood and about what a rotten daddy was. I don't think they're going to be able to tell them stories, dog. He got about six years because the oldest two are 12. Yeah, I'm waiting on... Uh, you know what's gonna happen? His kids are gonna put out a book like, you know, Nick Cannon, my dad. He never was there for me. He's a bad father, and all that stuff. And then Nick Cannon gonna be like, "Don't blame me. Blame your mama. She didn't call me the last." You know, like the other kids' mama was calling me at eleven fifty nine. Your mama was calling me at fucking eleven forty five. You know, I go to the last mama to call. She must not have really wanted me down there. You know, <laughs> he had to be on the phone and be like, "Boop, I got a call coming in." Hold on. Oh, sorry. Got to be with your, got. Sorry, kids. Got to be with another woman tonight. And yeah, maybe he didn't give them money, everybody. You fed them. Yeah, you fed them. But did you feed them freedom? But did he feed them freedom? Yeah. Think about that. Uh, <laughs> did you feed them freedom? But did that he matters. feed them freedom? A lot of y'all don't think about that. The poll... Who is right, Brian McKnight or his kids? This controversial poll is we it's getting spicy up in here. I don't know what. I don't even remember putting this poll out. Um, Karen? Oh, his kids. All right. 88% of people agree with Karen. They say his kids. 12% of people agree with Brian McKnight. Mm-mm, you don't pay your child support. I would love to know what 12%. I would love to know the reasoning. Was that twelve percent also treat their kids just like Brian and I do? Just I don't know. I don't know, but I would love to know. Mm-hmm. Mostly because I think whatever they say is going to make me laugh, even if I think it's outrageous and ridiculous. But uh, I mean, the kids are grown technically. Uh, the ones that he don't claim, but anyway, the poll on Spotify. 16% Brian McKnight. That's even oh, more than the 12%. Of course, they got that was with the money. They like shit. I cut my kids off a long time a ago. A long time ago. Brian just now coming around. I mean, I mean, I got a junior too. What you talking about? Uh <laughs> they don't they don't care about his kids, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> them kids oh, either, apparently. Them kids ain't make uh never felt this way before. Ah! Hey! Can y'all turn this down? Some of us got kids. Bitch, I got kids too. Turn up. That's dumb. <laughs> uh, so yeah, 84% say his kids, 16% say nah. Uh, comment on the YouTube. My mom t- commented on her own episode, said I had an awesome time on the podcast. I always enjoy the comments and questions from the chat room. Love, peace, and blessings, and happiness. Thank you, Mom. Oh, thank you. And I'll make sure to get this other episode on YouTube. Uh, sometime tonight, yeah, everybody. I really didn't know that I fucked that up. Um, I think that's. Oh wait, no, I forgot the Q and A. Uh, so the Q and A for Spotify for this episode, with my mom was, "Happy Mother's Day to whoever called Nick Cannon the latest." Casey says, "Go, my first time listening, loved it. Thank you, Casey." Thank you. Uh, uh, Adebola says, Mama, yes, Mama Deep Negro side during the Nick Cannon part took me out. He constantly contradicts himself. I wonder if he knows. And lastly, Raphael says, Shout out to all the this is the first comment this week. Interesting. Also, a shocking lack of NFT sales is going on <laughs> in the comments this week. <laughs> the, the average NFT sales going down. <laughs> he must have been busy. Uh, he was this must have been the week he took the cruise to Africa. <laughs> Right? Uh, 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 yeah, some of y'all must have hit that deadline, so we had to leave us alone for a while. He'll be back on it. Should be reports of missing black people coming out soon. <laughs> ah! Shout out to all the moms of the Black Outers Nation. Y'all are and stay winning. Also, the Nick Cannon's baby mama feeding those kids freedom is no mean fit. Salute to all freedom feeding mamas in the galaxy. Yes. 
Uh, all right, let's go. Oh, I haven't checked to see if we have voicemails. Uh, and of course, Skype needs to do an update. But Always. that's all good. It's all good. We Always. love an update. I say, it's time for another commercial break. I stay updated. Okay. <laughs> check out the voicemails we got one voicemail this week uh from our girl veggie vixen hey bon Karen. this is angie uh veggie vixen and i'm just calling i'm not sure if it was this week or last week but the uh comment about the or the story about the guy who was uh, working at the uh hotel that was sucking the guy's toes Mm. Well, I just happened to find a friend that actually knows the man in question that was having his toes up. <gasps> so I don't know if it came in the news or not, but apparently this man had been into the, well, based, okay, so the story goes, he was at a company function, he was drunk, he took an Uber, came home, which was, you know, came to the hotel, he was asleep. Apparently the dude that was sucking his toes, um, they found footage from two to five where the man came in not once but several times. So he just happened to wake up on one of the last uh, times of his uh so t- t- oh so no. uh toes <laughs> so sucking episodes. <laughs> it is crazy and it's like so ooh, it's cringy. But apparently he must have been doing it a couple of times. Um so much so that a friend, uh, she literally looked at the text messages from the guys. Uh, all his friends were teasing him about it um, and trying to make it, you know, a little bit light. But it is crazy. The dude was um, a sexual predator and had just gotten out for six months. Oh. And now he's the manager of whatever major hotel it was. It's crazy. Wow. But yeah, it's wonder what's on now. The update mm-hmm. is. It wasn't even put in the news yet. Okay. Take care. So the people, so what's, what's happening? We talked about this on Three Guys On, but not on our podcast. Okay. So we didn't do a guest of race on it because because we were on Three Guys On, um, it got spoiled for us. So there's no reason to play guest of race. But I do highly recommend that Three Guys, epi- Three Guys On episode where we talked about it. Because, man, we had fun. Like, honestly, man, just as a general advertisement for Three Guys On, me and Karen basically go on there almost every week. Um, And if you're a listener to Three Guys On, if you uh, check out their show on on, uh, Spotify, wherever you get podcasts, they have two episodes. One goes behind a paywall, so you don't hear that one. But the second one goes to everybody. And... I think you should give it a shot. Try it. I, we always have a fun time. Um, I really think it's helped Karen find an even better, like, comedic voice. I think a, one of the reasons that uh, you've gotten even funnier than you, you've been in the past is uh, going on there and just chopping it up with them, you know, especially even at that time when I where I wasn't able to be on because I was in New York. Mm-hmm. You know, I listened to it, and, you know, it's, you're always just cracking me up and stuff over there. And I love being on there too. Like, and the last few weeks has been, you know, especially fun for us. But like, um, like we did a whole like, almost like a punch up session or on like a created a Tyler Perry movie. Yes, we did. You know, I think that one might have been behind the paywall. Yeah. Uh. I, so it's called A Good Man. Um, I'll look it up because I think this one might be think, one of the ones that went out to everybody. That went out to yeah. everybody. Okay, that was good. So, uh, but yeah, so like we have such a good time over there, and I really think like I can't recommend it highly enough. If you like, if you're fans of us, and you haven't like checked them out, go check them out. And I really do think 
I mean, I'm a premium subscriber to them because I even if I wasn't on the show at all, it's it's a very funny, good show. It is, it is. And I've uh we've enjoyed them for years, even before uh shout out to Chris Lambert, because Chris Lambert, you know, yep. got, got us uh up with them. Mm-hmm. And I have always uh enjoyed them and uh, uh uh to go back to what you were saying, one uh they've always because I remember when and, and yes, it is. It is not behind a paywall. Episode 1202, okay. A Good Man. Go listen to this. I okay. promise y'all, y'all will be like, oh my God, this shit is so funny. We had a good time. But I remember during the uh, pandemic, uh, you would go on. And initially, I wouldn't come on with you. I would mm-hmm. just let you go on because I guess in my mind, uh, I figured out where Rod, you know, he's just kicking it, you know, with his friends. And I didn't want to, quote unquote, come in and... Uh, just, just, just disrupt that camaraderie. But I remember, I remember, I, w- I want to say Randolph told me, he was like, Karen, is an open invitation. Yeah. He said, I mean it. You literally can come on anytime you want to. Mm-hmm. And I took him up on that offer. And I'm really glad I did. Because one thing I really do love about Andy and uh, Randolph is they get me. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, they get mm-hmm. me. So they allow me just to be myself. And me being myself means particularly, like I said, when I get passionate, I get loud, and it don't mean I'm angry or anything like that, but they just allow me just to express myself. We can go back and forth. We can talk. We can laugh. We can joke, and just hearing them, hearing their minds tick and the many different guests I've had, it allowed me to uh, learn. I I feel like it's double Dutch, and over the years, particularly working going on their show i've learned how to double dutch better because before i see people double dutch and i will almost wait for the perfect time to kind of jump in but i realize it's not a perfect time you just have to kind of just jump in and be like fuck it <laughs> you yeah. know which is that was very hard for me to kind of wrap my head around at first yeah i think you um but yeah it's a, i think <clears throat> also one of the things is like you used to err on the side of not interrupting or not saying the thing and the thing is like and there's a timing thing to it of of course and you want to let people complete their thoughts and both of us are long-winded and go on like rants and or whatever you want to call them jags we both do that but also there's like a creative process to where you kind of have to know when like okay this thought's wrapping up let me jump in here and i i think it you've gotten more like aggressive with that in a good way of being like, let me get my joke out while I can, because if it is, if not, it just dies because people kept talking and now it's been a minute later and it's just not time to say that shit. So I think that's a big part of it, but yeah, I, I've man, three guys on, we have such a good time over there. I I really hope that people check it out. Um, and uh, Lakita, we have so many crossover fans. Lakita said in the chat, Apparently, a good the a good man joke started on the first episode behind the paywall. Okay, and then us doing the uh, workshopping of the bit into like a full blown Tyler Perry movie happened on the second, second part. Okay, that's why I was like, "Well, it's behind the paywall." Yeah, yeah. And also, uh, 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 to uh, uh, go back to what we was talking about, I think that uh, and I'm gonna keep it keep it real because of my personality and because being a woman you've kind of always been taught to be nice and you know you know uh i don't want to say shrink yourself but just be considerate and all that type of stuff so for me uh it's a little different it was a little different for me to see everybody going out like okay i want to jump in i want to jump in i don't know and i was yeah. like you know what i've got to i got to get over that you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and so and i think doing that and kind of exercising it on that show helped me out on our show as far as when we do have guests speaking up more jumping and, in more yeah when we have guests and stuff um certain guests i don't even have to worry about it because it's a certain guests that i know you like a lot or you're familiar with a lot or you're big fans of and so those days i i can almost like just set up a, a question and just sit back <laughs> but then there's sometimes where like it's more of an interview style because we don't know the person or whatever mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I used, to, we've tried every, like behind the scenes stuff. I've, it's like, okay, Karen, what if you write down your questions and then you ask the questions during the conversation and then that way you'll be prepared. So it's not, and we, Karen would have a list of questions and not ask him. <laughs> I would be and scared and intimidated. I'm not I, even yeah, lie. we were in the show and I'd be like, what happened? Like, like you had these great questions. Cause the thing I'm thinking about <laughs> constantly, and I know it's not necessarily, uh, healthier in everybody else's 
pastor's mind, but I know there are people that listen to the show that think like this, which is I don't want to be the, the man on the show talking all the fucking time, and my wife's just here to be here, right. and it's really my show, and when we have a fucking guest on, it's just me and the guest doing all the damn talking, and Karen's just here to be here, and everybody's thinking, oh, look at these men silencing the black woman. <laughs> And I'm like, I've never in my fucking life. Cut me off then. Say whatever you got to say. I really, like, I like I feel like that, it looked bad. Right, you know? just be like, I let you talk, not let me talk. Yeah, I'm not. I don't want to be Stephen A. Smith. I would much rather you be participating in whatever. Because I, I don't, I can adjust to, to the rhythms of yes, other people. Yes, but, so I always feel like that's, at least I always feel that that eye on me that I, I know I'm putting it on myself, but I think that's what makes the show better is to put the eye on yourself sometimes and be like, hey, this might be 10 minutes of Karen having something to say with me not saying shit, and that's okay. Like, this, like I, I don't have, I know all men are supposed to have this, like, it's about me. I need to talk. Uh, You know, uh, shut up, woman. Like, I know every man is supposed to have that, but I try to, like, not have that. <laughs> Yes, and, and 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 being aggressive is uh, is kind of opposite of my nature, mm. and so for me it was something which with, which is ridiculous to say because you talk to everybody all the fucking time I everywhere. Do. Yes, I do. So that's not outside of your nature. That is not <laughs> true. I mean, when when I mean outside of my nature is as far as like podcast form, right. you know. Uh, no, like you said, every day, yeah. day like I walk up to a complete the, stranger. My job, and just talk to him. part of my job is to get <laughs> to get your nature out there on here. I feel like yes, but I have to say I thank three guys on because I feel like a lot of that helped. With, it did. Hey, I became I'm much more comfortable now. Yeah, I'm, I'm like fuck it. I'm go. <laughs> y'all gonna hear what I got? Because because hey. I mean, if that's the other thing, if a joke don't hit, we just move on, or yes. you make fun of that. Yes. Move, so it's not about no one got a hundred percent joke rate. Period. No. You know, so anyway, it's hard to banter by yourself. It and is. so yeah, shout out to three guys on, but that's where we said that. Yeah. Not here, but mm-hmm. that was also a fun episode. Yeah, so go go listen to that. And it is wow. The the basically dude came in and started sucking the dude toe. Dude woke up and had to call the cops on him. Lots of jokes. Yes. Lots of jokes. All right. Last segment. We gotta get to these voicemails. Uh, but first some music, everybody. Some music. <laughs> Really well, kind of too, but is Theron just sent a link to Instagram Reels and said balls deep? So I don't know what's happening with that. About to say, is, is it spam? Is that for me, you and Justin? Uh, is that yeah? I don't have to look at that one later. <laughs> Cardi B, Cardi B for lunch is the title of his emails from John. He said, "Good morning, Rod and Karen. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that yes, that outreach over Cardi B offset Happy Meal is absolutely a product of racism and misogyny. I know my people." And I'm pretty certain it's only white people and maybe some respectability PLC who would take any issue with it. Yeah, that's a good point. I'd love it, to see the breakdown racially of the which McDonald's franchisees took objection. What a, Which one were inner city, which one mm. were, were out, and which state they were in? Because, like I say, the thing is, Cardi B, I'll just say, is too famous and she has a huge following all across the country and all across yeah. the world for you to be like, I don't want the money. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I can see some people who probably already go, or maybe like I hadn't tried it in a while. Oh, I go buy that because I'm a sucker for that. Like, um, mm-hmm. what you call it? Did the did the meal at a Chipotle, and that that shit is flames. Yeah, you know. So periodically, when they be having them special meals, I would actually go do it out of hey, let me just try this thing. Even same thing with uh, uh, what you call it in the hotty sauce. Yeah, I go yeah. try. I go try it just Megan. Be, you make it a style because I go try it because I'm like, oh, they're doing something. It is. It's not a huge investment. But it's like, I'll do it, you know, just to support. And yeah. so I don't know nobody that owns a McDonald's franchise that will go, no, I don't want the people's money. Like, yeah. that's almost, why did you buy the franchise then? It's almost opposite of what you're and trying to like, accomplish here. The ones you, the like, 
Travis Scott was another one they didn't like, supposedly. BTS, is that was that one fine? Or, you know, like I, I, I like to know I like more to know. about it. But yeah, my now let's say racist against my K-pop. default, my default is yeah, feels a little racisty. You know, but I'm not saying it is racist, I'm, but feels a little mm-hmm. racism adjacent. I do want to see who else they objected to, you I, know, who else on. they had meal deals with. I don't know because I don't be following them like that, but I would like to know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm guessing most of the IRS aimed at Cardi for giving us too many boners because the old white people who complain about complaining McDonald's probably don't even know who Offset is. <laughs> That's true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> The museum gift shop is one of the most devious inventions of mankind. Just be glad that Karen doesn't like to spend an hour in there while you are starving and just want to go home for lunch. And then she doesn't end up buying anything. Uh, she doesn't end up, even end up buying anything. Uh, sounds like some personal issues going on over there, John. <laughs> yeah, the flashback po thing. We are definitely more stereotypical museum people, though. It can spend two to three hours going through the good ones, especially on some edibles. Uh, to each their own. Stranger, I almost most un- unlimited patience for museums but when it comes to dinners or parties after an hour i'm ready to bail funny how we work it is man and like i said it's just i know i'm weird like that <laughs> to the point i think i've even said on this show before in my brain i feel like everyone else is faking that's how far it is that's how far down the rabbit hole i am when i look at other people staring at some shit for 15 minutes i'll be like look at this motherfucker pretentious fake ass bullshit pretending like they can see everything in a painting nigga move to the next one ah! <laughs> like that's my brain you are not here for it that's just my brain I just like move on i don't carry that energy i never do it to anybody right. like when i'm in the museum you would just think i was like walking through a mall looking in the store windows that's how fast i move like mm-hmm. i really just be like okay taking that in that's a nice outfit moving on to the gap no need to ah! No need to study the outfit or nothing. Look, looks like a coat. All right. Two arms. <laughs> uh, the illusion place especially sounds, looks fun. Yeah. It is. It's really that's, fun. That's the perfect one for me because the illusion thing isn't about standing and sitting in the illusion for long periods of time. Mm-hmm. It's like you get, and the other reason that museum is dope is something literally to get on each exhibit. Yeah. Unlike you know the pretentious museums, no offense, where if you're not if it's not your thing, it's like I'm walking in a room full of blocks. What 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 am I supposed yeah, they need to get people from people explaining some of this shit? Because I'm like, the fuck is this? I honestly need you. Don't just write down what the exhibit is. I need you to write down what the fuck I'm supposed to get from this. Yeah. Have somebody standing by the door to explain. Yeah, like, oh, the blocks represent the permanence of society or something mm-hmm, like that. Because at the Illusion Museum, it were people there. Because some of them, I was like, what's it supposed to happen? They was like, oh, yeah, this is what's... Like, it was somebody there to kind of help you along because they knew that some of this shit, people going to be like, the fuck is this? The Illusion Museum was perfect because even at... You didn't, I didn't even need the people for most of it because it would be like, right next to us, like, if you spin this, it'll look like the lines are static, but they're actually moving. And so you spin it and you're like, oh, that's what they mean. Ah, perfect. Perfect museum. 10 out of 10. No notes. No notes. In and out in 40 minutes. And uh, they all across the country for those of you thinking about it. P.S. Do you think Brian McKnight has ever gotten a world's greatest dad coffee mug? Uh, that, by the way, would be an amazing video for him to put out. <laughs> if he had old stuff that his kids his his original kids gave him the the brian mcknight volume one kids ah, the volume one kids not the volume two kids the original flavor mcknight's <laughs> oh man it's not funny but it is <laughs> Oh, I've never seen a nigga do this before in public like this. But if the original recipe McKnight's have like when they were kids and shit, like stuff like cards they got them on Father's Day, a mug that said oh, "World's cool. Best Dad." A lot of children do that, right? Right. If he broke them shits out on Instagram today as evidence, I mean he. He's being still an evil person, but man, I would die laughing. 
And he was like, oh, so I never was there for you. Well, that's interesting because I have this picture from 1997 when you gave me the world's greatest dad mug and socks for Father's Day. So now you saying I changed, okay? But you can ask my new kids. I'm still a great dad. So sound like maybe you changed. I don't remember giving you no world's greatest daughter gifts because i always thought you could improve you had room to grow <laughs> your performance reviews was middling at best i was getting world's greatest dad okay that's five out of five no notes <laughs> he should then and then he should break into a song every time people get mad so fuck them kids and i never felt this <laughs> like he's for like What's on the song? On the upside, Nick Cannon's kids will always be able to say, at least we don't have that dude for a dad. I mean, you hope they'll always be able to say that shit. Who knows? Yeah, they're not old enough. But, you know uh, who else thought that? Brian McKnight kids about 15 years ago. ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it happens. I don't know. Good luck. Cheers and stay safe, John. Thank you, John. Thank you. Whew. All right, that's it. Uh, like I said, we probably won't be taking uh, doing a lot of shows this week. We may do one for because sh- uh, we have a guest that that's supposed to come through. Mm-hmm. Um, one day this week, but uh, it, yeah, depending on how that goes, we may just take the whole week off. Um, but uh, thanks for listening, everybody. We appreciate y'all. Uh, 